what do you think of, uh, of Tesla? They've done a lot of price cutting. Now they're putting some price increases back in. What has it done to demand, and what does the competitive outlook look like, in the U.S. particularly, uh, for Tesla? Well, thanks for having me on. You know, and with regards to Tesla, over the last several months, uh, before recently, they had famously cut prices over and over again, trying to find uh, out where demand and supply uh, meet. And finally, we think that they've met some sort of equilibrium because a couple of weeks ago, they decided to start raising prices in geographies across the world. And so we think that's a pretty good sign as to how uh, their demand is trending currently. So we seem to have found bottom, and we think that probably will be a message that Elon Musk uh, sends to his investors at the uh, AGM later on today. What, 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 talk, talk me through what the strategy here is. Is Musk sacrificing margin and profit for share, or is it, is it that simple, or what? We think he has a long-term vision where he's sacrificing near-term profits for long-term profit. So we call it the razor razor blade model. He's selling vehicles today, you know, at a, at a low 20s-ish gross margin, give or take, depending on the quarter. And over time, we think that he expects to increase the penetration of his self-driving software. Today, that self-driving self software sells for $15,000 per unit. Right. So essentially, as he increases the penetration of that software, which we think is about in the high single digits globally, he'll be able to more than double margins on his vehicles. And that's something that he talked about. He's talked about a lot over the years. Uh, we're incredibly bullish on the long term prospects of autonomy. And it's just going to take a while before the software gets to a place where people feel comfortable deploying it and ordering it, paying a hefty sum for it. It, it is. I, I confess, I own a Tesla, and I use part of the autopilot, but the adaptation is going to be tricky, particularly for that, that step up where it is really full autopilot. What it does now is it keeps you in a lane, uh, and you've got to trust that little thing. Man, you've got to trust. And it's... <laughs> it's, 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 it's <laughs> there are times when I don't trust it. But let, let, me, let me change to another topic. Uh, and that is the need for Tesla to come out to refresh its line of, uh, of cars and to add this truck. Do they need to do that uh, urgently? Well, look, uh, the Cybertruck will start in small volumes uh, later this year. We expect an update on something regarding the Cybertruck at, uh, at the event tonight. Uh, it's an incredibly compelling vehicle. It's controversial. Uh, no doubt about it. And I've been vetoed in my family with getting one. Uh, my wife won't let us have it just because it's not for her. Uh, but if you see it in person, which I did at their recent investor day, it's remarkable. And I suspect that over the next several years, they'll sell a lot of those vehicles. We don't know exactly what the pricing is going to be uh, when they release it to the public soon. But suffice to say, when you see it in person, when you see what it's capable of, when you uh, experience what it can drive like, uh, it's incredibly compelling. And, and not only that, but I think um, even more importantly from a volume perspective is the next-gen vehicle platform. Now, they kind of hinted at this at their recent investor day. It's going to take a, a, a result in a step down in pricing. And when this gets deployed, and we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, is it going to be more enabled uh, for autonomy, structured mm -hmm. for autonomy? Uh, it's going to really accelerate EV penetration across the world.